Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's time to get into the bite. Wahoo in the boat, baby! I mean, you talk about epic fishing days. Yeah! Nice bulldog right there. deep drop. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grab this enabler, just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Alright folks, so like I said, this is the beginner's guide to deep dropping. We're not talking about fishing in 100 feet, we're not talking about fishing in 200 or 250, even 300. We're talking about the minimum of 500 feet. 800 feet and a thousand plus. So when you're deep dropping, you're going to catch fish like the black belly rose fish. You're also going to catch fish like blue line tile fish. And every once in a while, you will run into that elusive golden tile fish. Now periodically, when you're out in a thousand plus feet, also you're going to run into fish like pomfrets, barrel fish, and alfonsinos. But what we're going to concentrate on this episode is the basics and how I go about teaching folks to do deep dropping. We're not going to get real complicated. We're going to keep this simple. We're going to bring it down to earth so that you can see how exciting it can be and you can head offshore and have a productive day. Okay, so we're going to get right into this. And the first thing we're going to go over is what gear you're going to need to do deep dropping. First and foremost, you're going to need an electric reel packed with braid. This is a Daiwa Tanacom 1000. It's on a Tanacom bent butt rod, 66 inch bent butt rod. At the tip of this rod is a swiveling roller guide. The Daiwa Tanacom 1000 is one of the most basic deep drop reels you can get. There are other brands that are similar to it and then there's the more expensive brands like LPs and stuff. If you're willing to spend six grand on a reel, LP is the way to go. The Daiwa Tanacom 1000 set up on a rod like this will not break the bank. Now I usually advise people when they want to get into deep dropping to get the 1000 because of its line capacity. My reel is packed with 70 pound braid and I have 700 yards on it. Which means I can go deep dropping in you know a thousand feet, 1200 feet and still have line on should I get into a whopper of a fish. Now yes you need to pack the whole thing with braid. There's no underlying monofilament, all braid on this reel. And at the end of your braid, you're going to hook on a 300 pound ball bearing swivel. As your baits are descending, they're going to spin a lot. So you need this ball bearing swivel to sort of alleviate some of that spinning motion that's going to happen. I just said we're going to hook the swivel straight onto our braid. When we hook that on, we're going to hook it on with a double Palomar knot. You don't want that knot slipping out. And with braid to swivel, the strongest knot that you can use is a Palomar knot. Now, again, notice, braid straight to swivel. There is no shock cord. We're deep dropping. You don't need shock cord because your line is going to hit the bottom and it's going to sit there. You're not going to be dragging it. Fish aren't going to pull and stretch and you're not setting the hooks. And again, remember, we're 800 plus feet down in the water, so there's no need for a leader. The fish aren't going to see your line. And since you have an electric reel, you're going to need a cable to hook it up to a battery. That being said, you need a battery. This is just a car battery. Now they do sell batteries that are made specifically for electric reels. You don't need to spend that extra money. You can go right to Walmart like I did and buy a battery and it'll work perfectly fine. Now lots of folks I know cut off these little alligator clips, they'll put on a pigtail and they'll run it straight to the batteries on their boat. You just want to make sure that you've got enough battery power in your boat or it has multiple batteries, that way you don't drain your battery power and get stuck way out in the middle of the ocean. If you're like me and you have a separate battery that is not the one powering your boat, you're going to want to keep it dry. You're also going to want to keep your power cord as dry with its connections to prevent corrosion. So to keep your battery dry, you just purchase you 
a battery crate. The way this works is your battery goes in there and it sort of just snaps together and your cable comes out of one of these two openings right here and it keeps your battery dry. So now you've got your reel, you've got your swivel, you've got your battery and you're all set up. The next thing you're gonna need is a deep drop rig. This particular rig right here is made out of 300 pound test monofilament. It has crimp swivels that allow your bait to spin because remember I said we're getting a lot of that spinning motion as our bait is descending. As you can see, it's allowed to spin freely. 6-0 circle hooks and a little glow bead. This is your standard deep drop rig. At the bottom of it, we have a 150 pound snap swivel with a coast lock and at the top it's just crimped with a loop so that it can go on the swivel that's at the end of your braided fishing line. The next thing you're going to need is a sash weight. This is a five pound sash weight. This is what I use to go deep dropping in 800 feet of water. You're out there in the stream, the current's ripping three and a half knots plus. So you need this to help you get down. Even with this five pound weight, if you're out in 800 feet of water in the stream, you're gonna let out at least a thousand to 1100 feet of line just to hit the bottom. And then you're gonna have to let out another couple, two or 300 feet to get into that bite real good before you start cranking up. And now the last piece of gear that you're gonna need if you wanna do deep dropping is you're gonna need lights. These lights blink. These lights are water activated. They start blinking as soon as they hit the water. I find these little lights to be just perfectly fine. I get them off Amazon and they work for several trips out before the little cell battery dies in them. Before we move forward, I just wanna give you a basic demonstration of how this is gonna go when you're getting set up. Take our electric reel and we'll plug our power cord in. Wind it up and we'll hook it up to the battery. All right, so here's how this goes. We've got our 300 pound ball bearing swivel attached to the end of our braid. We're gonna take our lights. I like to use two at a time and we'll hook on our lights. Then we'll take the loop of our deep drop rig and hook that on. Close the clasp and we're good to go. Now we'll take our sash weight and we're going to hook it onto the bottom swivel of our deep drop rig. And there you have it, from your light all the way down. This rig is about six feet long, so you've got hooks that are right near the bottom and hooks that are about five feet up off the ground. They're in about a foot increment. And that's the basic gear we need for deep dropping. So as I mentioned, when we're deep dropping, we're going after deep water fish, black belly rose fish, tile fish, and you know, those other ones that I had mentioned that were further out, pomfrets, barrel fish. Now when I have someone who's shown interest in deep dropping and I'm getting into teaching them how to do it, on top of advising them of what reel to start out with, I start out with a specific target fish. And that is the black belly rose fish. To me, they are the easiest of the deep water fish to target. And I say this because they're fairly far offshore, they're not commercially fished, and once you find them, you'll find out that they're in an area where they almost blanket the ground. And what this means is once you drop out and you make ground contact, you only have to give it maybe 10 seconds and you'll actually see the fish starting to hit. You'll look at your rod tip and you'll see it's starting to bounce and that's them hitting. And then you're gonna let out a couple hundred more feet to make sure you get more than one fish at a time. Remember, we're deep dropping. We're not trying to catch one fish at a time and wind up, you know, 1,300 feet of line for one fish. We want to pull up three, four, even five at best. And that's what we're going for, that golden ticket where you pull up a full stringer. So I want to be clear, rosies are found in 800 feet of water. You can go a little shallower, 790 or so, and a little deeper, 815 or so, but right around in that temperate zone is where they hang out. If you drop your line out, you make ground contact, and you've let out over 100 feet of line, and you haven't seen them hit, you need to wind up and move. They're not there. That's how aggressive they are. Now, another thing that will help you find them is using your GPS and your depth finder. 
you're not going to mark rosies on your depth finder. It's just not going to happen. But you can identify areas that will help you find them on your GPS. What we're looking for is areas of contour lines that are not super packed together. We're looking for areas that are almost mud flats. On your GPS, you will have contour lines. You don't want them really packed together like this, you know, where you've got 790 and then, you know, 800 and then 805. What this means on your GPS is that your ground is descending. We're looking for more flat level ground that is almost mud flats for these rosies. So we have, let's say we're in here around 790 and then we've got a big area out here and it comes to 805 and then maybe more out here where we're around 820. That's what we're looking for in our contour lines on our GPS versus stuff like this. This is not so much of a descending ground, it's more flat. And this is the area where there will be mud. Not only are there rosies out there in that depth zone, there is also golden tilefish, which is a very elusive fish that people target a lot of time. But when I'm teaching people to fish, I don't want to get their hopes up because you can go home broken hearted a lot of times if you're looking for those tile fish. We're fishing for rosies to start out with. The most basic of deep dropping fish. Alright, so that's what we're going for. Those basic fish. And then we can work our way up towards trying to hunt down tile fish and those other fellas that are way out deep. The technique to deep dropping. We're not going to really hold our rib. It's going to be in a rod holder. We're going to put our reel in free spool and let it dive down. So when you initially put your reel in free spool, you're going to notice that your weight is going to go and it's going to make an initial bounce. Don't try to stop this and control this by putting your thumb on the spool. You want to keep light pressure on it so that it doesn't create a bird's nest, yet you want to let that weight rip. You want to let it go. Don't try to let it keep bouncing. If it bounces a lot, you run the risk of it snapping right at your swivel and losing your whole rig. So we've put our reel in free spool and it's dropping out. Let's say we're in 800 because we're talking about going for roses. You're going to let out about a thousand feet plus of line. When it hits the bottom, do not lock it up. You will leave it in free spool. You're going to hold your thumb on your spool and you're going to let it slowly go out. Don't let it get tight yet don't let it go slack. You want to keep light pressure on it and you'll feel the current and the bobbing of the waves pulling it out. And once the rosies start to hit, like I said, you're going to see the tip of your rod starting to bounce. At this point, you're going to want to let out another couple hundred feet. So I typically say, you know, if you out about 1,050 feet, 1,100 feet, you start getting those hits, let out to about 1,350 or 1,400. Then once you hit that zone and it's time to lock it up and power up your reel, you'll be on. Now I know it's an electric reel and it seems less like fishing than average fighting a fish and playing a game fish. It is, but again, you've got to use finesse when it comes to this. If you just immediately throw your reel in full crank and have it winding up as fast as it can go, you run the risk of your fish getting yanked off the hooks. Remember, we don't have a shot cord. We have straight braid onto our leader. So you've got to use some finesse and slowly power into it. And then as you're winding up, you can increase the heat on them a little bit so that it doesn't take 20 minutes to reel up. Now, I always like to say a telltale sign that your fish are still on as you're winding up is you'll see them fighting against you and they're pulling against the rod tip and what's happening is is they're going through barotrauma as you're pulling them up from you know this very deep range. Typically rosies go through a battle of barotrauma in between 300 and 200 feet from the surface. That's when you'll really start to see them start kicking and you'll say okay good I know I've got fish on. Then once you get your fish up to the boat most electric reels have an auto stop function and you power down and you wind it up till it stops completely 
and you probably have to take five or ten cranks on the handle of the reel to get them the rest of the way up. Then you'll grab your leader by the swivel and about halfway through the leader and you'll pull all your catch onto the boat. Get them all the way in. You don't want them falling in the water. All right, and that's the basics of how you do deep dropping. Like I said, we're going out and if you're just getting into it, my suggestion is to go and learn how to deep drop by catching black belly rose fish. All right, now remember, periodically, you are gonna run across a golden tile fish in the land of rosies. Rosies are in the diet of the golden tile fish. So let's say you've gotten a grasp of this and you want to go hunt other fish. Let's say you wanna go after blue line tile fish. Blue line tile fish are found in between, let's say somewhere around 480 feet out to about 520. Again, in those mud flats. You've gotta pay attention to the contour lines on your GPS so that you can identify these areas. If your contour lines are very stacked together and packed together, you're not in mud. You're more than likely over a rocky bottom and you're not gonna find them. Tilefish burrow in mud holes. And then the fish that are out deeper, pomfrets, barrelfish, Alfonsinos, fish like that, you've just got to go and explore. And there's places where you can use seafloor mapping and look for where there's holes and ledges and stuff like that way offshore in that thousand plus foot range if you're going and looking for fish like that. All right, now I'm going to answer the question that you're probably asking yourself. Well, hey, what bait do I use to go deep dropping? The premier bait for deep dropping is this, squid. Now you can buy five pound boxes of it. Me, I buy a one pound box of it. And this will typically last all day for going for rosy. Squid is a very hardy bait that doesn't come off. You'll find once you pull the hooks out of your mouth, you've still got your bait and you can just drop it back down until it gets washed out, loses its flavor. Tilefish also eat squid. So this is a great bait for those two species. Another great bait for deep dropping is bonita slabs. You can take them, you can use them thick, you can cut them thin, leave some skin on so they don't get pulled off and it's a hardier bait. Bonita makes a great bait for deep dropping. Now for rosies, I'd stick with squid. But if you're going for blue line tilefish in that 480, 500 range, I recommend giving the Bonita a try. I've had more success with Bonita for tilefish. And now let's say you're out in the land of the rosies and you really want to target a golden tilefish. And now another great bait for golden tilefish is the black belly rosefish. Like I said, the black belly rosefish is in the golden tilefish's diet. So when you get a little one like this, you'll want to butterfly him and rip out his spine and hook him on straight through his head. Or let's say you got a little bit of a bigger one like this, which you could eat him if you want to, but I decided to keep him for bait. This one, you can actually take a little fillet off and hook the fillet right on to your hook. And that'll be a nice hearty, tilefish bait. And now while we're talking about the bait size rosies, if you drop down and you get a stringer of guys that are these size, you're going to want to move. Go explore a different area because chances are they're not going to be much bigger than this. They do kind of feed in a pecking order where the bigger ones are going to eat first and then the little guys can get whatever is left over. So if you're getting the little guys, just consider moving. Now rosies are not big fish at max, you know, three pounds, maybe four pounds if you get a super jumbo one. But remember, once you're on them, you're on them. And what you'll do is your drift pattern will be the exact same because of the current. And you just paint that drift pattern on your GPS and keep going back to the spot. And if you go back to that initial spot and they stop biting, it's time to move on to another one. A lot of deep dropping is about research and exploration. And real quick, I want to touch back on the deep drop rig again. You can make it yourself or you can buy it from a store. The key essential factor to it, other than it having the swivels where your baits can spin as they go down, is you need circle hooks. Do not deep drop with J hooks. Your fish will come off. And again, we're not setting the hook. You're not going to pick your rod up and yank back and make sure these fish are on. They are going to set themselves, they are going to come and almost inhale the bait. So 
so you don't need to worry about setting the hook and once you've got one hooked it's going to start a sort of feeding frenzy and it will attract the other ones to come and hit the other baits that are on your deep drop rig. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned a little bit about what I consider to be the basics when it comes to deep dropping. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.